Hello, I'm Sarah Grady Ackerman. Florida is a rich environment for stories and writers, and Key West may be the epicenter of that tradition. William McKean captures that climate in his nonfiction work, Mile Marker Zero, The Movable Feast of Key West. It's the 2011 Florida Book Awards Gold Medalist for Florida Nonfiction, and William McKean joins me now. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you, thanks, to have, thanks for having me here. Now you live and work in Massachusetts, right. so it begs the question, how did Key West uh, you know, draw you into to write a book about it? Well, before I moved there, I lived here for 25 years, okay. working at the University of Florida, and I moved off to Boston University a few years ago. In fact, I was right in the middle of writing this book. Um, and on my way from uh, Florida to Boston, I went by way of Montana, which is a little out of the way. <laughs> yeah. But it seems like a lot of the main characters I was writing about had moved to Montana, so huh. I kind of had to go there. And I was uh, sitting down at a bar there with a friend, and he got up to go see somebody. And I was checking my mail or whatever, and a guy comes and sits down next to me, and I said, uh, sorry, my buddy's sitting there. And I looked over, it was Carl Hyacin. Wow. So, you know, there's Florida everywhere, so yes. it's, uh, there's a, a concentration of Floridians in, uh, in Montana. Well, okay, so tell us, give us kind of a brief uh, summary of your book. Well, it's sort of about the artistic life of Key West. There's a little bit of the whole history of the island from prehistoric times, but really the focus is on the 1970s mm -hmm. and that generation of writers and artists that came there, like uh, the novelist Tom McGuane, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Harrison, everyone knows from Legends of the Fall. Uh, Hunter S. Thompson, who had kind of come there to cool out from a bad divorce, mm -hmm. as if there's any other kind. <laughs> and um, what's that guy's name? Jimmy Buffett, Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> who showed up as a, a total failure. He was absolutely a washout in the music business. Really? And he was sleeping on people's couches and, and playing in the streets. And uh, was even chased off of doorsteps, you know, get away. You're scaring away the customers, man. And what he did was he took the essence of Key West and managed to percolate that into a three or four minute song mm -hmm. and uh, and kind of made Key West into this huge tourist destination. But wow. but back then it was just a funky little town and I wanted to write about the artists who had kind of come there. A lot of the men, let's face it, had come in with these macho fantasies because mm -hmm. this was Ernest Hemingway's town. And around that time, uh, you know, there was a larger uh, influx of uh, gay mm -hmm. tourists who mm -hmm. then came there and lived because of the inspiring presence of another great American writer, Tennessee Williams. Mm -hmm. So there's just something about this two mile by four mile island that brought together all this artistic talent in that time and place. And so I focused on the decade of the 1970s and uh, I thought there were a lot of good stories to tell. And I was very happy with the book. Uh, just hearing all this, I'm, I'm thinking that the research that you had to do for this had to be quite interesting. Well, it was kind of weird because my wife's from Key West, and so every time we go to Key West, it's nonstop. You go visit the Uella here, the Uella there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go all through, and, and we get exhausted just visiting family. Mm -hmm. And so when I would do research on this book, I'd say, I'm sorry, i got to go alone. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I wasn't going there to party. Right. I, I stayed uh, with her uncle who just sort of gave me the keys and said, you know, uh, run around, do whatever you want. And, uh, yeah, I had a beer now and then, but... It was mostly uh, work, but it's the most fun book I think I've ever written. It's, uh, it was just such a pleasure, and, and rarely have I felt that the actual writing was fun, mm -hmm. but this writing was fun, and I wrote half of it in, in Florida when we, we lived outside of Gainesville. We had a little farm, mm -hmm. and so it was kind of written outdoors. I'd take mm -hmm. my laptop out to the picnic table and sit under the, the Spanish moss and all that, and then uh, almost the last half of it, maybe the last third, was written uh, when I went to Montana to do research, and uh -huh. so I was staying up all night, you know, trying to make my deadline, uh, writing in a cabin with you know bears outside and all this kind of stuff. So, the writing of the book was so intense and so mm -hmm. much fun, mm -hmm. and and I think I, I'm very happy with the way it came out because most people who have talked about the book said, "Man, I laughed so hard. It was fun." And there's there's some heartbreaking stuff in there too, but right. it's the the idea is to convey what this island has done for American art. I think a lot of great literature has come out of that generation. And is that kind of along the lines of what you hope your readers um, take away? You know, uh, I don't know what all they're taking away from it, but they everyone seems to be a satisfied customer. So I was very happy uh, with the critical reception of it and still the, the emails I get from people that said, 
boy, that really took me back. And even if they'd mm-hmm. never been to Key West, they said, I want to book a ticket now. And I didn't write it. As, you know, this is not a book for tourists, mm-hmm. uh, unless you're into time travel, because it's, it's mostly about, uh, you know, what happened 40, uh, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, you know, it does really, I hope, evoke that place and that time. Well, it sounds like it did. Thank you so yeah. much, William. Thank you. And again, congratulations. Thank you. The Florida Book Awards are presented annually to recognize, honor, and celebrate the best Florida literature. The program is coordinated by the Florida State University Libraries and co-sponsored by these groups that promote books by and for all Floridians.